The media rightfully condemning yesterday's mob violence on Capitol Hill. But there wasn't much outrage this summer as America's major cities burned. The coverage was much more sympathetic. Watch. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful, largely peaceful demonstrations in the face of law enforcement. It wasn't until night fell that things began to get a little bit more contentious. This is, this is a most slick protest. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not, generally speaking, unruly. Uh, Democratic cities are in chaos right now. Is this what you want from Joe Biden? And they're going to take your country away, and they're taking down the statues. And crime is rising as they defund police. Oh, my gosh, it's so bad. And they're defunding police. It's like... <sighs> the Democrats don't want to defund the police anymore, do they, Greg? They were, uh, they were yeah. very grateful that the yeah. police were there to help them out yesterday. Yeah, during the summer, they were very concerned about the optics of the police responding to threats, looting, violence. They, the police had to be hand, essentially metaphorically handcuffed uh, to, to be, keep from being seen of, of roughing up any of the, um, you know, the virtuous protesters. But here now, they're demanding that the police step up to the plate because these are not their protesters, right? And again, this shows you that the media only covers what it wants to cover, and you don't get any say whatsoever. It bleeds right into the election fraud element. Because their guy won, there's no point. Meanwhile, they did it for four years because their gal lost. So what you're seeing is always what the media wants you to see. That, that is why we're at this predicament right now. This is why we're at each other's throats. It's because they've been creating the narrative of division. CNN especially. Uh, it's, their, it's their monetary vision. Mm -hmm. Katie, okay, I think we have some sound from Anderson Cooper. If we can play that and you can react. And they're going to go back, you know, to the Olive Garden and to their the Holiday Inn that they're staying at and the Garden Marriott and... They're going to have some drinks, and they're going to talk about the great day that they had in Washington, and they really did something and stand up for something. And they stood up for nothing other than mayhem. And, and a man who is, you know, in the despicable waning days of a failed president. Oh, my. Katie? This is why I don't think anything is going to change, because they have no self-reflection about ignoring the past year of violence, and they have no intention of sitting back and maybe taking a look at why this might be happening and not you know, making fun of people uh, and stereotyping them in a way that they would never accept in stereotyping of other people. I just find it amazing to continue watching those clips over and over again, to watch the reporters standing in front of a burning building and the Chiron saying, fiery but peaceful. You know, Attorney General Bill Barr described these media folks when these riots were happening as a collection of liars, and that's absolutely true. And you can see with your own eyes what's going on. They're telling you it's not actually happening. You see that the majority, uh, not the majority, but the, there were studies done to kind of prove that BLM and Antifa were peaceful protests, but it actually turned out that the many of them turned into rioting and looting that will devastate communities for generations to come. And now, you know, they did this because they wanted to protect Joe Biden. They right. they had this narrative running up. Remember the timing on this. They All summer long, they said it was justified. They took on the movement. Corporations donated billions of dollars to people who were looting. Kamala Harris put out a link to bail people out of prison uh, for looting and engaging in arson and, and a number of other crimes. And yet, Right in September, at the beginning, the narrative in the media changed. I remember the exchange between Don Lemon and Cuomo saying, oh, well, this is showing up in polling. This is starting to look really bad. Maybe people should stop doing these things. So it was only until it was not politically expedient for Joe Biden that the media actually changed their tune on this, which shows you they're more interested in politics and actually just reporting what's going on, whether it's happening yesterday at the Capitol or in Minneapolis last summer. Dana, yesterday the president took to social media and told everybody to come back peacefully and, and, and knock it off. And uh, social media giants, Facebook and Twitter, pretty much told him to knock it off and froze him out for a little while. Uh, how did you react to that? Well, I think that, you know, if you look at what the, the, the full content, the full text or the full um, video of what President Trump said, it wasn't just that he said, please stop everybody, go home. It's that, they are, the social media companies are saying, you are continuing to repeat things that we have determined not to be true, and therefore, 
just because he said, you know, go home peacefully and I love you, um, they took that first part and said, okay, we're going we're gonna to shut this down. It, it's an interesting thing, um, this, this social media piece. It's, it's, there's going to be a reckoning on that. Um,